Do you not currently throw a slider? Well, based off historical Major League data, odds are you probably should. You've come to the right place to start to learn a slider, as this video will break down everything you need to know about throwing a slider. What's up guys? My name is Chris Langan and I'm a pitching coordinator here at Driveline Baseball. In this video, we're going to detail how to throw a slider, specifically looking at the grips and cues we utilize here at Driveline Baseball. If you'd like further context, which I think is always good if you're looking to master your craft, you can look at our previous videos looking at movement and spin and the different type of slider variations across the league. Let's first get into some grip intricacies that are commonly asked by our athletes, specifically regarding whether or not these things matter. We've recently begun the process of tracking whether or not any of these grip intricacies we're going to discuss here actually influence a pitch's movement profile acutely. Currently, it's more of a case-by-case -case basis, or at least that's our hypothesis. Regardless, know that for one athlete, a slight manipulation of the ball could be the difference between an average slider and an above average slider. First off, we'll start with thumb positioning. Some pitchers may feel it's easier to get around the ball when the thumb is on the opposite seam relative to where the middle and index fingers are. Some pitchers will even tuck their thumb underneath the ball. We track this at driveline by looking at whether or not the thumb is tucked or flat and have three separate coordinates that are shown in this video. Zero, which means the thumb is tucked directly underneath. 25, which means instead of being on the side, you're kind of right in between those two. And then 50, which would mean you were literally on the side like this. Next up, we've got spikes. Making a spike modification can help with getting the index finger out of there and presetting some middle finger pressure. We might do this if somebody is throwing more of a slutter or cutter slider and the cues we are using feel either unnatural or aren't working. We didn't create the spike alteration, but we will classify them here at driveline. We have the standard spike, the stacked spike, which is really just taking the index and pressing it into the middle finger along with the knuckle spike. Here's a few of what we'd consider base grips that we tag in gym as well. Here's what the SL2 or between grip looks like. The pitcher will place his index and middle fingers on the narrow seam and press his or her middle finger against the arm side seam with the index finger staying on the smooth part of the ball. The thumb again can be anywhere. Right here I'm showing it at zero, but for some athletes they may like it here at around 25. SL3 or the horseshoe slider is where the pitcher will face the horseshoe of the ball towards them and will creep up on the arm side seam. The index finger will be on the smooth surface of the ball. Finally, we've got the SL5 or the across offset grip. Here, the pitcher can take a generic four seam fastball and offset it towards the horseshoe. From here, they'll sim simply creep up a bit onto the seam and generally pitchers like to put a little bit of extra middle finger pressure into that horseshoe. Next, let's get into some of the cues we'd utilize here at driveline to try to get a pitch to move in a manner we'd want. Anecdotally, you have the athlete talent level, the coaching talent level, the grip, and the cue as the variables at play when designing a pitch. Personally, I would think that the cue actually is more important than the grip for a lot of pitchers. That being said, the grip can make the pitch and the cue can make the pitch. Here's an example of an athlete going from a sweeper profile to more of a gyroscopic slider profile simply by modifying the cue he was given by the coach. The grip, which is SL5 or the cross offset we discussed earlier, stays the exact same. Here's a list of cues that may be helpful in your pursuit of either teaching or throwing a slider yourself. People often get caught up with the technicalities of how the pitch is supposed to look like coming out of the hand. The reality is, an athlete who continues to get behind the ball and throw a cutter may simply need a more aggressive cue, such as being told to throw a literal curveball, to get them to their desired movement profile, even though, technically, that's not how they would get that more gyroscopic movement profile. Where to start first? If you have never thrown a slider before, there's probably a good chance you've thrown a curveball, as that pitch is generally taught before the slider. Personally, if this is how you grip your curveball, I would make a slight modification, whether it's to the horseshoe slider or to the between slider, and instead of getting too aggressive with cues, bear in mind this is the first time you've thrown a slider, I would simply try to tell the athlete to throw the pitch as hard as they can. From there, you'll be able to see whether or not the pitch visually moves closer to their curveball or closer to a cutter. Heck, it might even back up a bit. Nonetheless, after three or four of those samples, you can start to peel back the cues that may be beneficial for that athlete getting into the desired movement profile they're looking for. For instance, if your first slider backs up on you and turns into a cutter and even has arm side run, you know you probably need to cue them a little bit more towards a slider or even a slurve. If they try to throw a curveball as hard as they can and the movement really visually still looks the same and the velocity is pretty similar too, you A, may want to change the grip, but B, you may want to cue them even further into thinking a cutter or throwing it literally like a fastball until you get closer to that slider territory. Again, 
Are those technically what we're going to see at wrist orientation at release when throwing a good slider? Not necessarily. But the reality is, some athletes, when they think curveball, will just get into that slider territory. And for some of them, they may supinate so well and want to come in front of the ball that the only way you can get them to get into a true slider territory is to tell them to throw it like a fastball. At driveline, we utilize the blob, which provides us with stuff plus values based upon the vertical break, horizontal break, velocity of the pitch, and the pitcher's arm angle. This allows us to know which direction to go with, as it often isn't intuitive to know which version of a pitcher slider is best for them. We'll link our recent blog about Stuff Plus in the description below. Finally, don't forget that being able to throw your fastball firmer is one of the best ways to help your breaking pitches. On average, when a big league pitcher gains one mile per hour, we typically see that their breaking ball speed is going to go up about three-fourths of a mile per hour as well. Hence, if you throw 82, you probably don't need pitch design, you probably need to lift a lot of weights and improve your mechanical efficiency to get that desired slider you're looking for. And that's the basics of throwing a slider. Appreciate everyone following along today, and we will certainly be back with more pitch type videos and how to throw videos. If you have questions, please leave them below, as this video really looked to cover some of the basics of throwing the slider. We'd love to answer more granular questions that may come through. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, like it and subscribe it. Thanks for watching.